This Equipment World video is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Boy, do I have a machine for you guys today, but fair warning, put on your big boy pants because this is not a beginner's machine. Hi everyone, welcome back to Equipment World. You're watching The Dirt, I'm your host Brian, and today we're here to tackle the Case Minotaur, or more commonly known within Case, the DL550. This is the new product category that Case has created. It is a, a true dozer skid steer combination. So if you're not familiar with the machine, a traditional dozer blade that goes on a skid steer doesn't have any real coupling to the frame of the machine, and therefore it's always been a relatively ineffective grading tool. With the Case DL550, or the Minotaur, they actually have a C-frame that pins to the frame of the machine, which really does turn this machine into a small dozer. This is a really capable, really versatile grading skid steer dozer combo machine. It absolutely lives up to everything it was promised to be. But that being said, this is not a beginner's machine. But before we really dive deep, Let's kind of start with the initial walk around. One of the first things that is apparent to you as soon as you step out of the truck is the size of this machine. This is a beast of a machine. If you're going to compare this to a traditional skid steer, you're going to struggle on some of the small lots that you might want to get into. Mid-size lot, no problem whatsoever for this machine. It will be an efficient grading tool. But for some of your smaller residential lots, this sucker is not going to fit where a traditional skid steer would. On top of the fact that you have a fairly lengthy track base, it is a beast of a machine, you also have a ripper package that hangs about two feet off of the back of the machine. So overall, it's a pretty lengthy footprint. That's going to provide challenging for some of your smaller contractors that are doing small retaining wall projects or small yard restorations in a backyard of a, you know, quarter acre lot. Things can get a little tight with this machine due to the size. But that being said, if you think about what it's trying to accomplish by being a combination machine, this machine's going to be able to sneak into a lot of tight places that you would never dream of getting a dozer into. So there is this kind of weird straddling of the line, where as a contractor, you'll have to kind of evaluate what sort of job sites you want to be able to get into with a machine of this caliber. Now, another thing that's going to immediately stick out is the build quality. Whether it's the ripper package, the final drives, the boom arms, the actual frame of the machine, or the frame of the dozer package, this thing is built. I will say that. I, I constantly was looking around and thinking about what a quality build this machine was. It is stout. It is built to take the abuse that you're going to be dishing up by using this thing to push copious amounts of dirt. And let me tell you, this thing pushes. We'll come back to that in a minute. Another thing that's going to stick out to you is the hydraulics package. So this machine actually has kind of two hydraulic circuits, if you will, but one circuit, and this is common with its cousin machine, the TV620, which is the largest skid steer case released earlier this year, you do have one circuit that is dedicated to your standard flow, enhanced high flow, and high flow hydraulics. On the other side of your boom arms, you have a dedicated low flow circuit. This is limited to about eight gallons a minute. It's really there for some dozer functions, or if you had maybe a mulch head that you wanted to throw on and you wanted to operate the door hydraulically rather than putting on an electronic solenoid to control that door, you have the option of doing that. It is a low enough flow circuit. You're never gonna run any dedicated attachments off of that circuit. It's really there as an accessory circuit. Now, that has its pluses and minuses. Again, we will come back to that. But overall, this machine is an absolute beast and it is very well built. All of these things are going to be immediately apparent when you walk up to the machine. Now, another thing you're going to notice is this is probably the first time in your life you've seen a skid steer, a skid steer. Remember, this is a new machine category that has steel tracks. This machine has the option to have steel single bar grouser tracks, similar to a dozer if you don't know what single bar grousers are. You have the option for steel tracks with triple bar grousers, which again, if you're not familiar, that's like your excavator style tracks, or you can get a traditional skid steer rubber band style track. And I will say when you put the steel tracks on this machine, it looks mean. It is an awesome, awesome machine, and you get a ton of power from this package. So let's get into the actual running of the machine. When it comes to the cab, I want to first approach this as a skid steer, because we can all, as operators, wrap our heads around a familiar experience. We'll dive into the dozer component here in a minute. 
When you get into the cab, one of the first things that's apparent to you is the controls. This doesn't have the skid steer controls in it like you're used to in your B series or Alpha series skid. They actually have the T handles from the 1150 and up dozer line, the EH controls that you're familiar with if you've ran a case dozer. That's what your controls are in this machine. My initial thought was that this was going to be weird and it was going to really mess with me. In reality, I didn't give it a second thought. It was natural, my hands fell right into place, it really wasn't a big deal. Now the second thing you're going to notice as you sit down in the machine is the commonality between the DL550 and the Case B series skid steers. A lot of your buttons, the monitor, a lot of it's gonna be the same. And so you're gonna be very familiar, you're gonna feel very at home in this machine, but you are gonna notice there's some additional buttons that have to do with the dozer coupling and uncoupling, or switching from your regular dozer controls over to machine control. You're also gonna notice over on your right hand side that you have a ripper control, and let's face it, we've never ran a skid steer with a ripper on it, so you've never seen that before. A lot of subtle changes, but at the same time, they're subtle enough that you don't feel totally overwhelmed if you've sat in a case B series skid before. Now, a third thing you're going to notice is when you shut the door to the machine. This is one of the small things that just really sticks out to me because I've ran case for so long. They finally redesigned the front door so that you don't have that huge, thick border around it that really limits your visibility. They have redesigned the front door to look a lot more like the Caterpillar style door on skid steers. You have much better visibility. Now, unfortunately, this only applies to the regular glass. If you're a land clearing guy that needs that demo door, unfortunately, as of right Right now you're still stuck with that big fat black border but overall this is a very comfortable and easy machine to get into and really be familiar with assuming you're in skid steer mode and you're looking at it as a skid steer now they did do away with the H pattern and I hate to break that to some of you guys but in this machine it doesn't really make sense to continue to have the H pattern and so your pattern selector now is where you switch between skid steer mode and dozer mode now as we talk about running the machine, I'm just going to be honest with you guys, it's going to be very difficult to cover everything. There's just so much to take in with this machine, but I do want to hit some of the highlights. The first thing you're going to notice is you have the option to run your left hand control like a skid steer, where you are using that for speed, you have the flexibility to be able to move that joystick along the whole axis. Or if you push it all the way forward or pull it all the way back, you actually go into a detent and it locks in more like a dozer. This is really awesome because it also gives you the option through the menu system to change your foot pedal to an accelerator pedal like a traditional skid steer, a decel pedal like a dozer, or transmission mode, which again, like a dozer, you can run the engine at full RPM and now you're just controlling the track speed with your foot pedal. So you can legitimately run this thing like a dozer even when you're in skid steer mode. You just are using a bucket and boom arms instead of having a blade out in front of you. It's really nice. And I actually found myself using this feature way more than I thought I would. When I was doing my cleanup work where I just wanted to kind of go through and smooth everything off, instead of really having to hold that joystick back, I would just click it back into its detent position Position and really control my track speed with my foot pedal while I continued to feather my bucket however I needed to. That wasn't something I thought would be that handy and yet it turned out to be really handy. Similarly, and this one blew my mind the first time they mentioned it, if you think about it, when you're in a skid steering you back up and you turn it to the right, your butt end of the machine is going to go one direction. If you're in a dozer and you turn it to the right in reverse, your butt end is going to go a different direction. I had to really think about that because it's one of those things as operators we never think about. The cool thing is, through your menu system on the screen, you can change the way the machine reacts. If you want it to react like a dozer even when you're in skid steer mode, you can do that. If you want it to always act like a skid steer even when you're in dozer mode, you can do that. If you want to have the skid steer act like a dozer and the dozer act like a skid steer, you can do that. You can totally customize the way this machine moves so that it makes sense to your brain. So that in real time when you're operating, and I did this a couple times where my hands would get backwards, no sweat. Take it out of operate mode, go into your menus, it's very quick to get in there, change that option over, hit your operate button, and now you're live with the new movements. It's very well thought out, it's very well planned, and it's very quickly to navigate through to get to these options in the menus. It's really, really nice. Now another thing you're going to notice on your controls is, instead of having a one button 
rabbit turtle mode. You actually have a turtle button and a rabbit button. Case has done something very interesting here. Traditionally on a skid steer, you have high range or you have low range. You have rabbit mode or turtle mode. What Case has done is they've actually split both of those. So you have high mode, H1 and H2, or you have low mode, L1 and L2. Again, this is one of those functions that when I was initially told about it, it was like, cool guys, I don't think I'll ever use that. And then I found that I was using it all the time. And I'll tell you again, when I was going through doing all of my slick off, uh, the way I typically do things is I'll load up about three quarters of a bucket and then I will use it like a land plane to just kind of clean everything up, shave everything and slick it off. Well, if I'm going around in H2 or a traditional high range, Sometimes you just don't quite have enough torque. The machine starts to bog when you kind of get a little buildup of material on your bucket. Instead of having to drop all the way down to full on turtle mode where you feel like you're coming to a crawl, I would just bump it down by one and now I've dropped into H1. And most of the time, I would say probably 90% of the time, that would give me just enough torque that I could get my speed back up. And once that kind of pressure alleviated off the system, I would bump it back up and we're back in H2. But there were a couple times where H1 still wasn't quite there. And so I could very quickly bump into L2, which is the top range of your low range. And still, we're not at a crawl. It's just, it's just dropping enough speed that I can keep up with the material that's building up on my bucket. And as soon as I shed some of that material, boom, I step back up to H1, boom, step back up to H2, and we're again grading at full speed. A really, really handy feature. Absolutely loved it and used the snot out of it, despite my initial remark about not really wanting to use it. Now, we start to get into dozer mode. The initial knee jerk when you get into the cab with the dozer package is, I'll never be able to grade with this, I can't see anything. So when you get into the machine with the dozer package hooked up, if you think about it as a traditional operator operating a traditional dozer, your visible areas, the areas that we use to grade are generally gonna be your blade corners or the area directly behind the blade because we're monitoring what our cuttings are doing. You know, when do we run out all of the material on our blade so that we can start to reverse and make our next pass? We're looking behind the blade. Because the blade is tucked up so close to this machine, you can't see either one of those areas. If you angle your blade way off, you can start to see your blade corners. If you want to see your blade corners while you are grading, with the blade flush against the machine, you're gonna be leaned all the way forward in the cab. It's just, there's no getting around it. I'm gonna be honest, it really sucks at first because that's everything you've ever known as a dozer operator when it comes to grading. That is where you're getting your feedback. You totally have to get into this machine and I'm just gonna fair warn all of you guys, you have to get into this machine as an operator not as someone who is thinking you're you're running a dozer and you're going to be able to pick this up again in five minutes you have to get into this machine as an operator recognizing that this is a brand new machine category you've never ran this before you've never ran anything like this before and so you can't go into this thinking you're going to run it like a dozer because you will fall on your face the biggest analogy i can give you to try to prepare you for what you were in for is go from a d8 dozer that you can, mm, you can do a fine grade that is just smooth as glass. And now I want you to jump into a D3 and try to grade. You're gonna spend three or four days miserable falling on your butt with all the hoopties you're putting into your grade because you're not used to the short track base. Not only do you have an ultra short track base, but now you've lost all of your visual indicators as to when you are starting your cut in the ground. That is one of the first things I noticed. It's very difficult initially to figure out when you've even engaged the ground with your blade because you don't have the visibility that you do with a traditional dozer. And so again, for the first four or five hours, you're totally leaned forward in that cab, looking at your blade, trying to figure out when you're engaging. Now that being said, if you go into this as an operator, and don't try to get into this comparing it to everything you've ever known. You will actually start to be able to grade with this machine after about four to six hours of seat time. In the beginning, it's gonna be miserable. You're gonna dive that blade into the ground. You're gonna be making hoopties left and right. And it's gonna be, I, I, go back to day one of operating a dozer. Remember that frustration. Remember the anger you felt as you made a motocross track on that beautiful finish grade you were trying to create. You're gonna go back through that whole learning process. It is a difficult machine to grade with because of all of the things we've discussed. Now, that being said, 
in this review, one of the most important things to me was to spend enough seat time that I could confidently walk away and say, yes, you can do finished grades in this machine without machine control. And I can confidently sit here and tell you, as an operator, it will take you probably a good, mm, let's see, three to five days, comfortably three to five days in this machine before you will be able to finish grade. But you can 100% finish grade in this machine. By about six hours in the cab, I was able to get a good 50 foot long run that was nice and smooth. It looked like I had thrown it down with a dozer. It was work and it was a very frustrating six-ish hours to get there. But at the same time, I can confidently sit here and tell you, yes, you can indeed finish grade with this machine. Now, I do want to start to talk about the actual coupling and decoupling process. But before we get into that, I want to take a second to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its exhaust after treatment system has traditionally been seen as an either or proposition when it comes to choosing the engine oil that's going to protect your system. And that's exactly why Chevron spent more than a decade of R&D work developing a no compromise formula. Now, I don't have to tell you why a clogged DPF is bad news, but here's the real kick in the pants. 90% of that ash clogging up your DPF and then upping your fuel and maintenance costs, it comes from your engine oil. You might be thinking, why don't they make an engine oil with less ash in it then? You'll be happy to learn that Chevron agrees with you. They've developed a new ultra-low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology cuts sulfate ash by 60%, radically reducing the rate of DPF clogging and extending the DPF service life by two and a half times. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, now you don't. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology. It's time to kick some ash. This is so well implemented. I cannot stress this enough. It is intimidating. The first time you look at that C-frame sitting on the ground and the actual skid coupler that you get into, it is intimidating. It is, I don't know how I'm going to be able to get into this and hook it up without breaking something. It's actually really well implemented and it's very simple. It's very similar to hooking up a skid steer attachment. Now there are a few extra steps. But overall, I can confidently tell you as well, once you've done this a handful of times, I could easily switch out the bucket to the blade in about two minutes, just a hair longer than doing a traditional skid steer attachment. It basically involves going in with your skid steer plate and coupling to the dozer. And then what you're going to do is you're actually going to curl your bucket all the way back tight to the machine. You're going to push your operate button. You're going to switch over to dozer mode. And in dozer mode, you will then raise up the blade until the C-frame falls into, there's, a, and this is, I'm, I'm just going to try to give you a hand gesture so you understand. There is actually a little pocket that the C-frame will sit down into, and it is then perfectly aligned with your pins. And then just like you would couple a bucket, you have a second button that is for your C-frame pins, you will pop your C-frame pins out, and you are now mounted to the machine with the dozer blade. You take it out of operate mode, you jump out of the cab, you have four hydraulic lines to hook up, and boom, you're totally hooked up, you're ready to go. Dozer mode, engage, that's all there is to it. I wish it were more complicated so that this machine would require more skill to hook into and I could claim to be the world's greatest operator because I mastered it so well. But again, Case implemented this so well I could take anyone watching, I could take my six-year-old son out there, and within five minutes, I could have him hooking and unhooking that attachment with no problem whatsoever. Very, very great design. Again, when it comes to your movement mode, what happens to the machine when you put it in reverse and angle one way or another? Totally customizable in the options. It's great. You actually have a series of, I believe it is six. I can't remember. Please don't quote me on this, but I believe it is six different virtual gears, if you will, because again, this is a hydrostatic transmission, but you actually have the ability to step up and down through gears as you would in a traditional dozer. You've, again, as we discussed in skid steer mode, you have the detent. You can change your pedal over to accelerator, decelerator, or transmission mode. It's it's so intuitive that 
really the difficulty in running this machine is not wrapping your head around the fact that you're in a skid steer that's acting like a dozer. When you couple this dozer package onto the machine, you mentally just flip over into dozer mode and you just go run it like any other dozer. It really doesn't require any great transition of your brain or any specialized training. You just already know what to do in a dozer. The challenge is the lack of visibility of the bottom of the blade in your corners and the short track base. It makes it extremely difficult to grade just right out of the chute. You are going to have to spend time learning this machine. Now, another thing that I love about Case on their dozers that has carried over to the Minotaur is you do have a fine grade button. So you have your traditional blade shake button too, which I've always been a big fan of, but you also have a fine grade button. And essentially what that does is it take your slowest settings, which by the way, that's another aspect I haven't covered. All of your hydraulic settings are customizable in the menu system for speed, and that is tilt angle, uh, your boom up and bucket curl functions, everything is individually adjustable for your needs for whatever you want it to be. And by the way, you can store profiles in this machine as well. That's for hydraulic flow for attachments. It's all of your settings for your blade control. It's all of your settings for your boom and bucket control. You can store all of those independent and I can have my own user code so that whenever my buddy Rick gets in the machine, he can put in his code, boom, the machine is all set to his preferences. When I get back in the machine, I put in my code, boom, all of my preferences are back. But you do have the adjustability to customize all of these functions. But in addition to the customization within the menu system, Case offers fine grade mode, which takes your hydraulic controls for your blade and ultra slows them down. So when you're doing those last couple of passes that you really wanna look like glass, assuming you've learned how to grade in this machine, you can hit that fine grade mode and it's beautiful. I've always loved this about the Case Dozer line. I love that the fact that they've carried that over to the Minotaur. Now let's talk about the actual pushability of this machine. Whew, I cannot stress enough how impressed I was with the amount of material this machine pushed. This thing is a beast. I cannot tell you, I probably went into three to four different piles and thought there's no way this thing's even going to be able to move this pile. I, I'm just going to bog it or we're going to sit here and spin the tracks. I was wrong over and over and over again. This machine continued to impress me with the amount it could push. By far and away, as to be expected, the single bar grousers were the absolute winner when it came to the amount of material the machine could push. Now, what shocked me is that the rubber band tracks were a close second. I know a lot of guys are really struggling with whether they should go with the single bar grousers and really limit their ability to get into some job sites, but they really want that push power. Or should we go with the rubber band tracks and we're gonna lose on some of the push power, but, but it gives me more availability to get into different jobs. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, the difference between the single bar grousers and the rubber band tracks was not nearly as big as I thought it was going to be. There is, I don't know if it's just the low ground, or I'm sorry, the high ground pressure because it's a narrow track. I don't know if it's the weight of the machine or if it's just the design of, of the tread on the rubber bands, but those suckers would push almost as well as the single bar grousers. Don't get me wrong, single bar grousers were a clear winner but it was not by nearly the margin that I thought it was going to be. Now, when it comes to the triple bar grousers, I'm gonna be totally honest here. I think that's gonna be a pretty limited market for Case's customer base. It's really gonna be for those guys that for the most part are doing land clearing projects, uh, right of way clearing, stuff like that where the rubber band tracks get torn up, but you don't really need the full on steel, you know, single bar grousers. The problem that you face with the triple bar grousers is exactly what you see in excavators. As soon as you get into some sticky clay, as soon as you get into some wet conditions, those triple bar grousers load up with material and now you're just sitting on a bunch of drag slicks and you don't really have any traction. Of the three track packages, the triple bar grousers push the least amount of material. Now, again, in a land clearing application, I would absolutely choose the triple bar grousers and it would be a great track option. But overall, I think you're gonna see a lot more contractors going with either the single bar grousers or the rubber bands. This has been a blitz of covering this machine and I would love to spend more time going into detail, but unfortunately when you only get about eight hours with a machine, 
and you're trying to recap all of this in a reasonable amount of time, there's only so much we can do. So we are going to dive into some of the concerns that I've got about this machine because it can't all be honey with no bees. So first of all, the seat belt in this machine. This machine does not have a lap bar. They have gone to a seat belt only design, which I have to be honest, I'm a fan of. Unfortunately, Case has put a little loop in the seat belt uh, that you see in all equipment manufacturers have them in. And the only thing I can think is it's, it's to stop the seat belt from retracting all the way into the actual holder of the seat belt. But on this particular machine, that loop and all of the stitching, which is very stiff, sits right here on your collarbone. And I'm gonna be honest, I had a bruise from leaning forward in the seat, looking at my blade tips from where that loop hits. I think Case is ultimately going to have to change that design or move that loop up or down the seat belt just a hair more. It's a minimal thing, and that's the thing. This is this so minimal, it's not that big of a deal. It would never stop me from looking at this machine or buying the machine, but at the same time, it's a real concern as an operator when over the course of just eight hours, you've got a nice bruise on your shoulder. Another concern I have are the hydraulic lines for the blade. Uh, the hydraulic lines come out from your auxiliary hydraulics on your boom. They go to the actual C-frame of the dozer, and then they actually go underneath to go forward to where they manipulate the cylinders. When you are back dragging with this machine, those lines are actually rubbing in the dirt. And that's really cause for concern for me. If a rock gets up under there, or I'm in the north here in Michigan, we have chunks of frost. If you're doing anything in the, in the uh, winter or the springtime, I could see a big chunk of frost getting caught up under there. It rips your rubber lines. It's most likely gonna bend some of the steel lines and kink them, and now you've got some repairs on your hands. In Case's defense, I was talking with the Case staff there. They said of all of the units they have out in the field right now, they have yet to have that be an issue. So that could be a total non-issue and really not a huge point of concern. But as I watched material build up on those lines, as I was back dragging for some smoothing passes, it is a cause of concern for me. I think we might see some problems with that in the future, just from contractors having stuff roll up under there. One of the bigger areas of concern for me is when you couple into the dozer. You have to get the process, the order of operations when you switch over to dozer mode and how you fold things back and the order that you do that is very important. And if you screw that up, you can absolutely cause severe damage to the dozer package. In my mind, I do think that Case needs to build some sort of a safety into that where you cannot crumple the skid coupler portion of the dozer package if you accidentally start to raise that thing up or curl, uncurl your bucket when you're in skid steer mode, but you're coupled to the dozer frame. That's a pretty big area of concern for me because let's face it, if we've bought the machine as owners, we're gonna take some real care to make sure we get that right. Unfortunately, we have a lot of employees that run this equipment for us that they don't really care as much as we do. And it just takes one quick, I forgot to do this one step and I go to uncurl my bucket and next thing you know, you've caused, and I'm not gonna put a dollar amount. I honestly don't know the dollar amount of damage you would cause by having this happen, but it's not gonna be cheap if you crumple the skid portion of your dozer blade. I'm, I'm guessing that's gonna be a pretty hefty bill. And so it does cause me some concern that there is no safety built in to the dozer blade to prevent an operator from causing severe damage to, to the dozer unit. Now, another area of concern, and this is an area of concern also on its cousin machine, the TV620, is that case on both of these machines has moved to where you have one set of piping that is dedicated to your standard flow, high flow and enhanced high flow package. Now enhanced high flow can only be activated on this machine if you have an enhanced high flow attachment that jumps two pins on your electronics connection. So you're not so much worried about blowing out seals from an enhanced high flow standpoint, but it is a cause of concern if I hook up a low flow attachment to the same circuit as the high flow and I forget to take it out of high flow, I could see some operators doing some damage to attachments. That also means you have to dedicate a series of attachments to having three quarter inch quick couplers, or you're going to have to find some adapters so that you can keep those attachments to where you can use them on other machines, but also exchange them 
onto the Minotaur. So there is some cause of concern there for Case going to the one set of piping fits all method. This is, as we've talked about in the very beginning of this review, this is a totally new machine category and it's going to take a lot of education on the behalf of Case salesmen to tell operators you cannot get into this machine and think of it as a dozer. You cannot get into this machine and just think of it as a skid steer. You you have to run this machine. You have to learn how to operate this machine as its own thing. In fact, I didn't really cover it in my dozer portion, but you actually get to a point where you're no longer looking for the bottom of the blade. You're actually looking over the top of the blade and you just have that sight picture that I know roughly when the top of the blade is about here compared to my eye level that I'm cutting level. And then from there, you kind of switch over to your butt level that we're all familiar with in the industry and you start to run off of your butt level. But when it, when it comes to the actual first primary engagement of the blade to the ground, you start to use the top of the blade as your indicator. And as you are making those micro adjustments with your butt level, you're using the top of the blade to see what you're doing in relation to grade. That's going to take a lot of educating when it comes to case salesmen trying to sell this machine. And the other aspect is you can't take this thing on demo for one day and get a real feel for what it's capable of because you can't learn to grade in this machine in one day. It's really going to take a contractor taking this machine out for a week and spending all week with one operator really learning that machine to learn the capabilities of it. So all of that to say, that's kind of my overall thoughts on the Minotaur. Overall, I think it's a fantastic machine. I think Case did a phenomenal job in delivering exactly what they said they would. Is it going to take some time for the industry to learn it? Absolutely. This is not, and I said it in the beginning, this is not a beginner's machine. This is not a machine that you can get into if you don't have any machine experience and you want to start your business. I would not encourage you to get this machine. If you have a ragtag banded crew that sort of knows how to run some equipment, this machine is not for you. This machine is for companies that have some dedicated operators with a high skill set that has an open mind. You have to have an open mind with this machine. Assuming you have those things, this machine will 100% deliver on all of those promises. Because the other aspect that I haven't mentioned is, even if you never get to a point where you really get the hoopties totally out of your system, the beauty is, it still turns back into a skid steer. So you can get your grade 80 to 90% of the way there, and it still looks a little rough. But then you drop your dozer package, you flip over to your Harley rake or your bucket, and you do your finish passes, and within 15 minutes, you've got a beautiful grade that you were able to get all of your bulking done four times faster with the dozer package equipped. I mean, this machine has a lot of capability and a lot of versatility, but it's going to take educating those contractors on how to properly use this thing. So all of that to say... Fantastic machine. Thank you again for Case for having me out to actually spend some seat time in this thing. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I would encourage you guys to check out this machine. It is going to be a game changer for a lot of contractors. And when you really talk about killing mobilization fees, increasing efficiency, if you can get past that education standpoint, this will do those things and you will be much more competitive than all of your competitors. So as always, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you guys on the next episode of The Dirt.